Hey, what's going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Victus Core Gym. So three pros that I have with the Core Gym is number one, I think if you have a flatter and wider foot, this is a really good option to look into. So we don't have a super aggressive taper here through the midfoot into the forefoot, and the shoe doesn't have a lot of arch. So I think if you have a wider midfoot and you're constantly battling the arches of your cross training shoes and you find them uncomfortable, this can be a good option. It also has a pretty anatomical toe box. I have an E with foot and I actually find that my foot has a ton of space in this, almost too much room at times, but overall, flat and wide feet, I think you'll enjoy this model. The second pro that I have with this shoe is if you're wanting a shoe primarily for lifting and CrossFit, I see this is a very viable option. Option. So in the context of lifting, this model has a good stability with this high rebound EVA foam midsole. It doesn't have a super high stack height and you have a pretty dense rubber outsole to give you additional traction and to add to that stability. For CrossFit, the shoe does a pretty good job at giving you enough bounce for most wads, but then also a nice level of durability for most CrossFit workouts as well. So you have synthetic leather overlays covering the toe box up here, and then you have this para rigor sidewall system here that gives you additional lateral support. I found this to do a really good job at it resisting abrasion on rope climbs. So if you want a shoe for lifting and CrossFit, this can be a great option to look into. And then my third pro with this shoe, and this is gonna be a super niche one, is if you like shoes that feel like skate shoes that aren't necessarily skate shoes, I think this model is gonna fit the bill. So honestly, when I put this shoe on, it felt kind of like a DC skate shoe. And I have trained plenty of times in old skate shoes, and I constantly love doing so because they feel kind of flat. They have like bulkier uppers and a little bit more structure, which I typically like. And so I think if you're somebody who, for example, loved the Reebok Nano X, which I also felt kind of like a skate shoe, this could be a really good option to look into. And I know it's super specific and niche, but I know there are some of us out there that really enjoy shoes like that, especially in the context of how training shoes fit. But now let's talk about a couple of cons that I have with the Victus Core Gym. All right, so two cons that I have with the Victus Core Gym is number one, while I love this shoe for flatter and wider feet, I actually think if you have a narrower foot or even a low volume foot, you might wanna pass on this shoe just because you do have a pretty high volume here through the forefoot and midfoot, which can be great for thicker feet, but if you have narrower feet, lower instep, lower volume feet, I think you're gonna be sliding around in this shoe. I have to crank the laces pretty tight to get this model nice and snug and I have an E with foot, so if your foot width is narrower than an E width, I would either say size down a half size or potentially look into other models because the volume of the shoe, I don't know, is necessarily gonna land for your foot anatomy. The second con that I have with the shoe is, while on the side it is marketed as a shoe that you can use for like cardio sessions and whatnot, I found the shoe to be pretty comfortable for like 800 meters, 400 meters and down, but if you're gonna tack on a mile or two miles of running pre or post workout, or you are very much into hybrid training, I would say probably pass on this shoe. I think it can feel a little bit bulky in that context, and honestly, with the high rebound EVA foam midsole, while it does have a decent responsiveness for plyometrics, box jumps, jump rope and whatnot, not for running, I don't think it's gonna be the best or the most conducive if you're looking for a plusher and more soft ride. So just keep that in mind that this shoe will have some limitations like most cross training shoes that work really well for lifting as well. But overall, the shoe has been a really strong performer. But now let's talk about the performance of the Core Gym. To chat on the performance of the Core Gym, I'm gonna break this section to a few different parts. I'll talk about how this shoe performs for lifting, CrossFit, cross training, short runs, and then daily wear. In the context of lifting and CrossFit, I like this shoe for three different reasons. Number one, the durability has seem to be pretty good so far. So with this Pararigger sidewall and with the synthetic leather overlays over the toe box and the knit upper, the shoe has done a pretty good job with abrasion resistance. Like I have not noticed any major breakdown issues yet. And so I think if you are looking for that training shoe that can be pretty bomb proof, this could be a pretty good option to look into. Now the upper is gonna be a little bit heavier compared to other trainers, but I think that does give you a little bit of additional durability in the context of CrossFit and just general lifting. The second reason why I like this shoe for these contexts is with this high rebound EVA foam mid Sole, I find it to do a really good job of giving you enough stability, but then also some responsiveness. So for example, when deadlifting 475, squatting up to 385 in the shoe, I never had issues with stability. And I like that they're bouncy enough to do plyometrics in. So if I'm doing wads that have a lot of box jumps, or if I'm doing some form of pap training where I'm doing broad jumps and vertical jumps, the shoe feels pretty good overall. The third reason why I like the shoe is its width. So I think if you're somebody that likes having a shoe that gives you ample width to let the toes splay, let your foot move naturally, this can be a good 
option plus with that additional volume, you never really feel restricted in the shoe. Now in the context of cross training, I like this shoe, but I do think there are some things to consider. So with this shoe's sidewall system, I like it for lateral workouts. I also like the rubber outsole and how much traction you get on different surfaces. This shoe I think will be a good pick for training on a bunch of different surfaces. So for grass, turf, rubber gym floors, etc. This model's outsole will do a pretty good job in the context of cross training. And I do like that it has kind of like this flatter feel despite having like a four millimeter drop. So if you like those things with your cross training shoes, I think you'll like this model. My issue with this model for cross training is with the excessive volume, I think you can slide around at times. So for example, I have to crank my laces pretty tight once again, as I've already said, and that is because I will slide into the toe box of the shoe because there is so much forefoot volume. So while that isn't necessarily a bad thing, it is something to consider if you have narrower feet and low volume feet once again, and you're planning to do a lot of explosive movements in your shoes. This might not be the best model for you. When it comes to short runs, I already touched on this, but the shoe can work for 400 and 800 meter bouts in my opinion. If you like denser shoes for your run, it will also be fine. But I think if you're looking for that hybrid shoe for tacking one, two, three plus miles on for your workouts, this model can feel a little bit heavy at times. So just keep that in mind. Also, you're gonna wanna make sure you adapt a forefoot or midfoot strike in the shoe. The heel can feel a little bit dense as well, just because you do have a similar density with the midsole throughout the entirety of the shoe sole. For daily wear, I like this shoe. I feel like it has a nice casual appearance so if I'm running errands or if I'm just going to a coffee shop and whatnot or walking the dog. I like that it looks pretty good. Also with this shoe's rubber outsole, I do feel like it's gonna give you additional protection from just general breakdown of concrete use and whatnot. And I think if you are somebody that wants to use a shoe for rucking, this could be an okay option to look into as well. But what I will say is with this tread, I did go hiking in the shoe the other day and I had a backpack on. I was sliding a little bit, so definitely consider that with your shoes if you're planning to ruck in this model. But from a general general comfort for like walking in rucking and just walking in general and daily wear, this shoe does a pretty good job and the width is a nice contributor to this. So when it comes to the price of the core gym, you can expect to pay 125 USD. Now that is pretty in line with most cross training shoes, especially more premium cross training shoes. And I think if you want that shoe for CrossFit cross training and lifting, the price point is fair for this model. Now buyer tip, I would say look on Amazon, look on some of the tactical sites because they often have this shoe marked down. So I actually bought this pair for about 110 after tax. So definitely search around if you want to try to find a deal because I'm pretty confident you probably can with a little bit of research. All right, so now it's up to the question, who is the Victus Core Gym best for? So number one, I touched on this in my pros, but flatter and wider feet or even thicker feet at that. I think you're going to love this shoe and how it fits. You get ample volume for the forefoot and midfoot and you have a nice wide sole construction. So I have an E with foot once again, and I find this shoe to be plenty wide for my foot anatomy. So if you have a double E with foot or wider, this shoe actually might fit your foot anatomy pretty dang well. The second context where I think this shoe makes a lot of sense is if you want a shoe for CrossFit and for lifting, this shoe I think does a really good job in those verticals and thus far it has held up pretty well. I think since this shoe is kind of more like tactical or functional fitness focused, it does have some reinforced layers to help prolong its durability. So I think it can be a really suitable option in that ask. And then number three, I touched on this in my pros as well, but if you are somebody that loves training in skate shoes, but you don't necessarily want a skate shoe and you want a little bit more of a training shoe that's a bit more versatile and optimized for your training in the gym, this can be a great option to explore. Now, who shouldn't buy this shoe? Number one, narrow and low volume feet. I would say probably pass on this shoe. Even if you size down, I'm not confident you're gonna get enough volume to kind of lock your foot down and give you the security you want. And then number two, if you are a hybrid athlete and you want that shoe that can kind of transcend just lifting and also work for some mileage here and there in your workouts, this might not be the best model for you because with that skate shoe feel, while I like it, it can give this model a little bit more of a heavier feel to it and the upper isn't the most breathable. All right, so when it comes to sizing and fit of the Victus Core Gem. You're gonna to wanna to be specific on your foot anatomy. So for wider feet, flatter feet, go true to size in this shoe. If you have a regular or neutral foot width and you typically have a lot of room at the end of your toe box, you might wanna size down a half size. If you don't have a ton of room typically in your true to size, go true to size in the shoe as well for regular and neutral width feet. If you have narrow feet and you do wanna try the shoe out and you know that it might not fit, I would say start with a half size down and order from somewhere where you can return them because again, they might not align with your foot anatomy, but if you wanna try them, sizing down a half size I think would be a safe bet. All right, so when talking about the weight heel toe drop and insole in the Victus Core Gym, for my size 10 model here, we have a weight of about like 12.8 ounces. This is a heavier cross training shoe compared to its peers. The heel to toe drop of this shoe is four millimeters and this model has a thin 
thin foam removable insole. All right, so now let's break down the construction of the Victus Core Gym. So up here on the forefoot, you have an extended outsole layer that wraps up, and then you also have some synthetic leather overlays over the forefoot here. Looking at the upper construction, you have a knit and mesh that runs throughout the forefoot up here into the midfoot. You have five core eyelets that go up. You have a padded mesh tongue with the loop here for security. The tongue itself is not gusseted, and I haven't really found it to slide a ton, but it does kind of move if you don't lay it flat when putting the shoe on. You have the pararigger sidewalls here on the medial and lateral side. This helps give this shoe's sidewalls additional support and structure. Back here on the boot, you have a padded mesh throughout. You also have an internal heel cup down here that helps give this boot a little bit more rigidity. And then you also have an external heel tab to help pull this shoe on. Looking at the midsole, you have a high rebound EVA foam that runs throughout. Once again, the shoe's heel to toe drop is four millimeters and this midsole is pretty stable. So when you're lifting, I don't think you're gonna have compression issues in this model. You have some Victus branding here on the lateral side of the shoe, on the tongue, and then back here on the heel. And then looking at the outsole of this shoe, you have a full rubber outsole that runs throughout. Once again, you don't have a ton of arch in this shoe. So that's why I also like it for flat feet. And you have this more low profile grip throughout, but it does a pretty good job at gripping different surfaces, especially in the gym. It's not the best on loose terrain, but in the gym, this model's outsole does a really good job regarding its traction. And then lastly, this model once again does have that thin foam removal insole, but that's pretty much the gist of this shoe's construction. If you have additional questions, drop them down below. All right, so before we wrap this review up, I do wanna talk on a couple of things that I would do to improve the shoe moving forward. So number one, I would potentially bring down this upper volume a little bit. Now that does come at a cost because I think this shoe does fit a very specific type of foot anatomy really well. And I like that it adds range to cross training shoes regarding different foot anatomies. Not a lot of training shoes I think has a, have a ton of volume through the forefoot and midfoot, but all that said to capture a larger part of the market, I think bringing down that volume could be a smart call. And then number two, I love the sidewalls of this shoe, but I think if they had a little bit more ventilation, that would be a nice call for giving this shoe a bit more breathability in hotter gym settings. This this model can run a little bit hot, especially if you're in a hotter gym or you're doing a longer session. So those would be two little critiques that I would make to the shoe to make it a slightly stronger performer for a wider audience. All right guys, that wraps up my review of the Victus Core Gym. Honestly, this model has been subtly surprising and it has grown on me a ton. And I like that it adds depth to different sizes where you can find cross training shoes for very specific foot asks. But all that said, if you have additional questions on this shoe, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, y'all, drop a like on the video, drop to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.